Good morning, and welcome to Ellen's YouTube Live. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Today we're going to do some more fun with the Let's Get Chemical stuff. And we're going to get started right away so that you can see all the fun things that we have. We're so glad to have you guys back with us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys. So the first thing that we'd like to show you is we're going to pour some hot water in the middle of these Skittles. What do you guys think is going to happen if we pour some warm water in there? What do you think is going to happen, Shannon? the <laughs> Skittles and milk. They'll melt. Good job. Okay. okay. How many of you think the colors and the things will melt? No. Yes. No. You don't think so, Matt? No. What do you think? Okay. Is gonna happen, Come on, Matt? it says chase the rainbow, I guys. Have, have, oh, 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 the colors are going to be gone. Okay. Be gone. I was thinking because he said when he eats it, that's. Oh, it just gotcha. It so he out. said it's not going to fully melt, but it is going to take the colors off of the right. Skittles. Right. Let's right. see. Oh, yeah, so cool. we have who thinks that it's going to melt? We have one that's okay. going to think it's who thinks the colors are going to come off of it. Okay. What? That's making two right. votes. See, um, guys, Ken, what do you think is going to happen? Or camera. Okay, so he's almost with Vicki Lee. So that's two, maybe two? Yeah. It's, oh, three. Because Shannon is thinking it's going to melt, too. Matt Nera, what do you think is going to happen to the Skittles? Do you think the color is going to come off? Do you think they're going to melt? Do you think they're going to stay the same? What do you think is going to happen to those? If we pour warm water over, they're going to stay the same? You say that it might stay the same. Okay. And Tim, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to melt? Okay. Um, Maria, what do you think is going to happen to them? If we pour warm water over Skittles, what do you think is going to happen to them? They are gone. Do you think they're going to melt? Do you think the color is going to come off of them? Do you think they're going to stay the same? Justin, what about you? What do you think they're going to do? What do you think, Justin? Remember, they're Skittles. They're all colorful. Yes. Uh, sure do. Colorful yes. Skittles. Yes. It's hard to yes. tell too because we don't want it to. And we, we don't want it to run separate. everywhere. Right. And then the water is not cold. The water is very warm. Water. Right. No, it's warm water. So what's it going to make them do? Do you think it's going to melt, Justin? Or yes, yeah, another book for melting. Okay. okay. So Vanessa, do you want to take a try? And we're going to pour it right here in the middle, and then the middle? water. Yes. Oh, so let okay. the water. And Let's see. Let's so see. It, Here we it's go. Not, it's in the middle, not around it. So let's okay, see. Are they going to melt? Or they're but going you're going to put them up there. They're going to touch them, right? Touch everything. Killer, killer. There you go. Here we go. Oh, I see something oh, happening. Oh. And we'll walk around and show you guys. Whoa. Oh, taste oh, the so rainbow as cool. well. Oh, it's starting to change colors. Ooh, it's really? kind of pretty. Whoa. Oh, my God. That's so awesome. It's so beautiful. Kind of pretty, huh? And how they stay. I thought it was just going to scatter all around. But I it's just too. Like, mm. Good job. Good, you guys. Huh? Way to go, Matt. So we're going to bring it around and show you how... Cool, look. Cool, it is. They did, but they're cool. You're right, Matt. Cool. Can you see, Vicky? Shannon, can you see? It's taking more and more color off of them. They're becoming white. Oh, right. They're turning into mentos. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys like to see over here? Yeah. Oh, 
You see, Tam? That's what happens to that one you put in your Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, Maria, can I show you? And I think it can, Maria. All the colors, I think it just. They're changing white. Yeah, and they're changing yeah, because huh? we're shaking and we're walking around. So it kind of just, Whoa. the colors just scattered and mixed. Hey, look at our scales change colors. They're real. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See the color coming off? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I'll meet you in the middle. All right. Get a little or orange. Okay, but we're not going to get to taste this rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we will see. This says it's supposed to wait about an hour or so. So we will definitely have to show you guys tomorrow what this ended up being. So tune in tomorrow. Make sure you take a look at that. Those Skittles actually smell terrific. They oh, do. The, the aroma is water, just... The aroma is amazing. That's so weird because yeah. I thought they might mix together the flavors and be icky. Yeah, the, <laughs> it smells good. It huh? smells so good. But look how the napkin is changing. Wow. So, so awesome. they say the reason that the napkin, um, it's called a walking, it's called a walking rainbow. A oh. walking on rainbow. A walking so rainbow. They say the reason that it's a walking rainbow is because um, at first it looks like it's defying gravity. And oh. then the water, how does the water get into the other cup? It says it's called a little bit of magic. Ooh, Ooh magic. yes. So it eventually the adhesive forces oh. the paper towel and um, the water are more uh, powerful than the cohesive force inside the water itself. Uh, so eventually the food coloring and the water, I mean, and the towel forces the other one to go into the cup, wow. which will eventually supposed to change the colors. Wow. Mm -hmm. I kind of see it funny. here. It's getting towards the Definitely, down of the yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. So it says the water keeps traveling up the as you can see it it travels up the paper towel and then it goes down Go the down. bridge so this is why they call this a walking rainbow, wow. rainbow. so it cool. says take an hour or so so i'm thinking maybe we can wow look how fast this one's traveling wow. Pretty mm -hmm. cool. so maybe we can keep it this way and then we can show them tomorrow what it looked like I think that's a good idea. Good idea. Yeah. Or we okay. could, you know, video it in. Like, if it gets changed really good later today, you could video it so that maybe tomorrow's. That's a good idea. Yeah, in case it might idea. go too far. Yeah. To turn brown <laughs> like the Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one, we're not sure if the texture of our plates are right or what, but I'll take one yeah. color, yeah, like a I monster like, color. I like and it just says to draw. In the middle of the plate. And this is an expo marker. I don't know. Can it work with any marker? It says you need to use an expo marker. Oh, okay. oh the dry erase. Ooh, what is kind of drawing? So, I think it's me, but I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. I'm kind of excited for that. I see what it is. Okay, it's a crazy looking cookie monster, real quick draw. <laughs> real quick cookie monster. Good draw. What about you, Vanessa? Let's see. I don't know what else should I Let's see. <laughs> Fun. Grace, can you draw me something real quick? I told you about my drawing. <laughs> Let's do a heart. Let's do a heart? Awesome. Do we need a color maybe? Maybe color that one in some. We'll try that too. <laughs> so basically what we're doing right now, guys, is we're going to take I, this awesome. I have made a pumpkin, but it is not ripe oh, yet. So it's great. Guys see what Miss Grace made? <laughs> okay. It's a green pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> so then it says to take. Aww. Now, we're not quite sure these plates are the right ones because I, they looked more like dining, um, dining plates or what have you. So it tells us to pour a little water over each one. It's warm water, right? It's still warm. Warm, warm water. Okay, let's see. Let's try this one. Oh, sure. That's my cup. And if not, we will have to try this experiment again with, with um, a better plate. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> or we'll have to do it on the dry erase board and throw the water at it. I don't no, know. I don't know. I think yeah. this is going to drink it up. Your I think it's more like a glass, glass plate. Yeah. So we weren't sure about bringing glass plates in, but we will probably have to try this. But that's the point of science, you know. Yep. Experimentation. Experiments, experiments, and... 
we see if they will work or if they're not. Watch as soon as we go off, the things start floating. <laughs> but well, you know, but what is it supposed to happen? They're actually supposed to float up off the plate. You can actually put them on your hand. You can watch the um, things, the ink walk around the water. Um, possibly some plates in the kitchen. I took a look and they all have um, plastic or something. Designs on them. Oh, well, that's like, you know. So we will definitely have to try this again with. I'm sure some of this have a plate. plate. Yeah. So that's how yeah. science works. It shows us oh, that this experiment will not work for us with paper plates. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. But it was fun, and we will again try this. So did you guys, what do you think? What do you think about our walking rainbow? You like it, Ken? Awesome. I think it's going to be great when it gets done. So we're going to take a look at that. And since we are wrapping it up and our, we had a wonk, we are <laughs> now going to get ready to bring our friend Grace in so that she can finish up Stuart Little for us. Sir Little, let's do oh, it. Yeah. 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 I don't know. We'll do some of it. Let's see what's going to happen. Stuart Little, oh, that oh, little oh, adventure oh, mouse. Grace. We're going to leave the rainbow. Oh, please. We're going to pull it back. Yeah, it didn't stick to me. <laughs> we were hoping. <laughs> Stay tuned for Aww. our walking rainbow. It's looking really awesome. Feel, yes. free, feel free to pay more attention to it than to me. <laughs> Hi, guys. Oh, once again, must Thank remove glasses Grace. in order to see up close things. So, so this is going to read to you guys, okay? Yeah. And so um, this is, book is Stuart Little. It's by E.B. White, who I did know that E.B. White wrote Charlotte's Web. And a lot of you guys are probably familiar with Charlotte's Web and the movie. And E.B. White wrote this book, Stuart Little, which was one of my favorite when I was younger. And it turns out that I found out in the, um, there's like a little foreword where another author writes some information. And I found out that E.B. White stands for Elwin Brooks White. So how weird is it that his first name is Elwin? What? I don't know anybody with that name. So Stuart gets into little scuffles. He gets into little accidents. Things happen to him. He goes out on adventures. And he is a little mouse that was born to a family, so he has parents and an older brother. But, uh, yes, he does get in trouble sometimes. And uh, so I've been able to stop the story, like, after one adventure is over with. So now we are on to a new adventure in Chapter 7 called The Schoolroom. So while Dr. Carey, uh, who is the dentist, was making repairs on a little car he made that was Stuart size and crashed, he decided that since he was about to take a long motor trip, Stuart should have the proper clothes. So he went to a doll's shop. Well, that's a good idea. Where they had things which were the right size for him and outfitted himself completely with new luggage, new suits, shirts, and accessories. He charged everything and was well pleased with the purchases. That night, he slept at the doctor's apartment because he has kind of left the home to go on some adventures, so he's not going back home right now. But here he is trying on some of the little doll's clothes. Doesn't he look sweet? He's got a little suit on. So he's, it says doctors, but he's a dentist. Last time we had a really good time trying to pronounce things like the person in the dentist chairs. So the next morning, Stuart started early to avoid traffic. He thought it would be a good idea to get out on the road before there were too many actual cars and trucks. So he's, I guess they got the car fixed up. So here is someone with, he is, Stuart is in the car and he's come upon someone. He drove through Central Park. They live in New York and 100th and 10th Street, then over to the West Side Highway, then north to the Saw, Sawmill, I can't say this, Sawmill River Parkway. 
and the car ran beautifully. And although people were inclined to stare at him, Stuart didn't mind. He was very careful not to press the button, which had caused so much trouble the day before. He pressed the button, and the doctor told him to do this. He pressed the button, which made the car invisible. Then the car took off, and uh, they couldn't find the car anywhere because it was invisible. By the time they found it, it all crashed up and had to be fixed again. So he made up his mind that he would never use that button again. And just as the sun was coming up, Seward saw a man seated in thought by the side of the road. Stuart steered his car alongside, stopped, and put his head out. You're worried about something, aren't you? asked Stuart. Yes, I am, said the man, who was tall and mild. Can I help you in any way? asked Stuart in a friendly voice. The man shook his head. It's an impossible situation, I guess, he replied. You see, I'm the superintendent of schools in this town. Well, that's not an impossible situation, said Stuart. It's bad, but it's not impossible. Well, continued the man, I've always got problems that I can't solve. Today, for instance, one of my teachers is sick. Miss Gunderson, her name is. She teaches number seven school. I've got to find a substitute for her, a teacher that will take her place. Oh, well, what's the matter with her, said Stuart. I don't know exactly. The doctor says she may have rhinestones, replied the superintendent. Rhinestones? <laughs> Can't you find another teacher, asked Stuart. No, that's the trouble. There's nobody in this town who knows anything. Well, no spare teachers, no anything. School is supposed to begin in an hour. Hmm. Well, I would be glad to take Miss Gunderson's place for a day, if you would like, suggested Stuart, agreeably. The superintendent of schools looked up. Really? Certainly, said Stuart, glad to. He opened the door of the little car and stepped out. Walking around to the rear, he opened the baggage compartment and took out his suitcase. If I'm to conduct a class in a schoolroom, I'd better take off these motoring togs and get into something more suitable, he said. Stuart climbed the bank, went into the bushes, and was back in a few minutes wearing a pepper and salt jacket, old striped trousers, a Windsor tie, and spectacles. He folded his other clothes and packed them away in the suitcase. So here he comes out of the bushes, all nicely dressed. It might be a Windsor tie, but he's got it tied in it. It's a bow tie, doesn't he? If you can see that, I know it's small. This, um, do, you th he, do you think you can maintain discipline? Asked the superintendent. Of course I can, replied Stuart. I'll make the work interesting and the discipline will take care of itself. Don't worry about me. The man thanked him and they shook hands. At quarter before nine, the scholars had gathered in school number seven. When they missed Miss Gunderson and word got around that there would be a substitute, they were delighted. A substitute, somebody whispered to somebody else, a substitute, a substitute. The news traveled fast and soon everyone in the schoolroom knew that they were all to have a rest from Miss Gunderson for at least a day. And they were going to have the wonderful experience of being taught by a strange teacher whom nobody had seen before. Stuart arrived at nine. He parked his car briskly at the door of the school, stalked boldly into the room, found a yardstick leaning against Miss Gunderson's desk, and climbed hand over hand to the top. There he found an inkwell, a pointer, some pens and pencils, a bottle of ink, some chalk, a bell, two hairpins, and three or four books in a pile. Uh, see, Stuart scrambled nimbly uh, up to the top of the stack of books and jumped for the button on the bell. So here he is on the desk, oh, thank you. And there's a bell, so I guess he climbs up to the top of the books and jumps on it and goes, ding. That's okay. We're just having a little technical difficulty here, so.
Okay, but at least the background isn't falling down because that would be the big screen TV and that would totally not be cool, right? So um, the boys, and he said, oh, after he jumped on the bell, he sat down and walked to the front of the desk and said, let me have your attention, please. The boys and girls crowded around the desk to look at the substitute. Everyone talked at once and they all seemed very pleased. The girls giggled and the boys, oh, oh, oh. And everyone's eyes lit up with excitement to see such a small and good looking teacher so appropriately dressed. Let me have your attention, please, repeated Stuart. As you know, Miss Gunderson is sick and I am taking her place. What's the matter with her? asked Roy Hart eagerly. Vitamin trouble, replied Stuart. She took vitamin D when she needed A. She took B when she was short of C, and her system became overloaded with riboflavin, thiamide, and hydrochloride, and even with peroxidine, the need for which in human nutrition has not been established. Let it be a lesson for us all. He glared fiercely at the children, and they made no more inquiries about Miss Gunderson. Everyone will now take his or her seat, commanded Stuart. The pupils filed obediently down the aisles and dropped into their seats. And in a moment, there was silence in the classroom. Stuart cleared his throat, <clears throat> Seeking, seizing a coat lapel in either hand to make himself look like a professor, Stuart began. Anybody absent? The scholars all shook their heads. Anybody late? They shook their heads. Very well, said Stuart. What's the first subject that you usually take up in the morning? Arithmetic, shouted the children. Father, arithmetic, <laughs> snapped Stuart. Let's skip it. There were wild shouts of enthusiasm as this was this, at this suggestion. Everyone in the class seemed perfectly willing to skip arithmetic for one morning. What next do you study, asked Stuart. Spelling, cried the children. Well, said Stuart, a misspelled word is an abomination in the sight of everyone. I consider it a very fine thing to spell words correctly, and I strongly urge every one of you to buy a Webster's Collegiate Dictionary and consult it whenever you are in the slightest doubt. So much for spelling. What's next? The scholars were just as pleased to be let out of spelling as they were about arithmetic, and they shouted for joy. Woo-hoo! And everybody looked at everybody else and laughed and waved handkerchiefs and rulers, and some of the boys threw spitballs at some of the girls. Stuart had to climb into the pile of books again and dive for the bell to restore order. What's next, he repeated. Writing, cried the scholars. Goodness, said Stuart in disgust. Don't you children know how to write yet? Certainly we do, yelled one and all. Well, so much for that then, said Stuart. Social studies comes next, cried Elizabeth Gardner eagerly. Social studies? Never heard of them, said Stuart. Instead of taking up any special subject this morning, why wouldn't it be a good idea if we just talked about something? The scholars glanced around at each other in expectancy. Could we talk about the way it feels to hold a snake in your hand when it winds around your wrist? Asked Arthur Greenlaw. Well, we could, but I'd rather not, replied Stuart. <laughs> could we talk about sin and vice? No. Pleaded Lydia Lacey. Nope, said Stuart. Try again. Could we talk about the fat woman at the circus and all, her, and she had hair all over her chin? Begged Isidore Feinberg reminiscently. No, said Stuart. Well, I'll tell you. Let's talk about the king of the world. And he never even saw Titanic. He said he looked around the room, hopefully, to see how children liked that idea. There isn't any king of the world, said Henry Jameson in disgust. What's the diff, said Stuart? There ought to be one. Kings are old fashioned, said Harry. Well, all right then, let's talk about the chairman of the world. The world gets into a lot of trouble because it has no chairman. I would like to be chairman of the world myself. You're too small, said Mary Bendix. 
Oh, fish feathers, said Stuart. Science has nothing to do with it. It's temperament and ability that count. The chairman has to have the ability and he must know what's important. How many of you know what's important? Up on all the hands. Oh, very good, said Stuart, cocking one leg across the other and shoving his hands in the pockets of his jacket. Henry Rackmeyer, you tell us what is important. A shaft of sunlight at the end of a dark afternoon. A note in music and the way the back of a baby's neck smells if his mother keeps it tidy, answered Henry. Ooh, those sound good. Correct, said Stuart. Those are the important things. You forgot one thing, though. Mary Bendix, what did Henry Rackmeyer forget? He forgot ice cream with chocolate sauce on it, said Mary. Exactly, said Stuart. Ice cream is important. Well, now, if I'm going to be chairman of the world this morning, we've got to have some rules. Otherwise, it will be too confusing with everyone running every which way and helping himself to things and nobody behaving. We've got to have some laws if we're going to play this game. Can anybody suggest any good laws for the world? Albert Fernstrom raised his hand. Don't eat mushrooms. They might be toadstools, uh, suggested Albert. That's not a law, said Stuart. That's merely a bit of friendly advice. Very good advice, Albert. But advice and law are not the same. Law is much more solemn than advice. Law is extremely solemn. Anybody else think of a new law for this world? Nix on swiping anything, suggested John Poldowski solemnly. Very good, said Stuart. Good law. Never poison anything but rats, said Anthony Bretsky. Uh, that's no good. That's so good, said Stuart. It's unfair to rats. A law has to be fair to everybody. Anthony looked surly. Mm, but rats are unfair to us, he said. Rats are objectionable. I know they are, said Stuart, but from a rat's point of view, poison is objectionable. A chairman has to see all sides to the problem. Have you got a rat's point of view, asked Anthony? You look a little like a rat. Oh, no, replied Stuart. I have more the point of view of a mouse, which is very different. I see things whole. It's obvious to me that rats are underprivileged. They've never been able to get out in the open. Rats don't like the open, said oh, Agnes Baretska. Uh -huh. That's because whenever they come out, somebody socks them. Rats might like the open if they're allowed to use it. Any other ideas for laws? Agnes Baretska raised her hand. There ought to be a law against fighting. Impractical, said Stuart. Men like to fight, but you're getting warm, Agnes. No scrapping, said, asked Agnes. Stuart shook his head. Absolutely no being mean, suggested Mildred Hoffenstein. That's a very fine law, said Stuart. When I am chairman, anybody who is mean to anybody else is going to catch it. Well, that won't work, replied Herbert, Herbert Prendergast. Some people are just naturally mean. Albert Fernstrom is always being mean to me. I'm not saying it'll work, said Stuart. It's a good law and we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try right here and now. Somebody do something mean to somebody. Harry Jameson, you be mean to Catherine Stableford. Wait a minute now. What's that you've got in your hand, Catherine? It's a little tiny pillow stuffed with sweet balsam. Does it say, for you I pine, for you I balsam on it? Yes, said Catherine. Do you love it very much, asked Stuart? Yes, I do, said Catherine. Okay, Harry, grab it. Oh, and he did. Harry's grabbing her little pillow with the stuff on it. Harry ran over to Catherine where Catherine sat, grabbed the little pillow from her hand, and ran back to her seat while Catherine screamed. Ah now then, Stuart said in a fierce voice, first voice, hold on, my good people, while your chairman consult the book of rules. He pretended to throw thumb through a book. Here we are, page 492, absolutely no being mean. Page 560, Nick's on swiping anything. Harry Jameson has broken two laws, the law against being mean and the law against swiping. Let's get Harry and set him back before he becomes so mean, people will hardly recognize him anymore. Come on. Stuart ran for the yardstick and slid down it like a fireman. And Henry looked frightened. 
Stuart demanded that he give up the little pillow. Harry pretended to be frightened, really, though he knew it was just a test. He gave Catherine the pillow. So here, look here. Stuart's like pointing at him. You, get back that pillow. Oh, there, that worked pretty well, said Stuart. He gave the pillow back. No being mean is a perfectly good law. He wiped his face with his handkerchief, for he was quite warm from the extent exertion of being chairman of the work. It had taken more running and leaping and sliding than he had imagined. Catherine was very much pleased to have her little pillow back. Let's see a little pillow a minute, said Stuart, whose curiosity was beginning to get the better of him. Catherine showed it to him. It was about as long as Stuart was high, and Stuart suddenly thought what a fine, sweet-smelling bed it would make for him. Hmm. He began to want the pillow for himself. That's a very pretty thing, Stuart said, trying to hide his eagerness. That's very pretty. You don't want to sell it, do you? Oh, no, replied Catherine. It was a present to me. I suppose it was given to you by a boy you met at Lake Hop Hopakatong last summer, and it reminds you of him, murmured Stuart dreamily. Oh, yes, it was said Catherine, blushing. Ah, said Stuart, summers are wonderful, aren't they, Catherine? Yes, and last summer was the most wonderful summer I've ever had in all my life. I can imagine, replied Stuart. You're sure you wouldn't want to sell that little pillow? Catherine shook her head. Don't know as I blame you, replied Stuart quietly. Summertime is important. It's like a shaft of sunlight. Or a note in music, said Elizabeth Atchison. Or the way the back of a baby's neck smells if its mother keeps it tidy, said Marilyn Roberts. Stuart sighed. Never forget your summer times, my dears, he said. Well, I've got to be getting along. It's been a pleasure to know you all. Class is dismissed. Stuart leaned to the door, climbed in the car, and with a final wave of the hand, drove off in a northerly direction while the children raced alongside and screamed, goodbye, goodbye. They all wished they could have a substitute every day instead of Miss Gunderson. And here he is driving past the school. So do you want me to be done soon then? So that's the end of this chapter. Now look, he, this time he had a whole adventure in one chapter. And next is going to be chapter eight, Ames, Ames's Crossing. So he's going to get his little car and drive over to a new place, and we'll see what kind of an adventure he has there. So Stuart might just be a mouse, but he's a pretty smart one, isn't he? And he does a good job wherever he goes of helping people, and that's a really good quality, I think. He, he, he never tries to be mean to anyone. He really wanted that pillow, thinking, that would make a nice soft bed and smell yummy and stuff, but he was he knew that the girl didn't want to part with it, so he didn't make a thing. So that's a nice guy, I say. So that'll be the end of this Stuart Little Chapters for today, but there's only a little bit net left, and maybe we can finish it next time. And then uh, we might read that Charlotte's Web book or The Trumpet and the Swan, if that's what you like. So... I will say goodbye to you guys for today, and I've had a wonderful time. And I don't see a sign up here, but I'm going to remember remind everyone, Elwyn is looking to hire more staff. We kind of always are looking to hire more staff. It's hard to do sometimes. And I understand that we've had some little nibbles on our bait. And if you drive by Elwyn right now, there's a sign hanging up on the outside edge. If you guys didn't notice that when you came here this morning, that says that Elwyn's hiring. And that's the phone number for you to call. And we'll be happy to give anyone that would be interested in working here the information if they give us a call and say, hey, I'd like to work at Elwood. We will lead you to the right place to put in an application and answer any questions you have about the qualifications because we would love to find some more really good people. Wouldn't it be great if we could get some great people like Vanessa and Carmen who are super nice and super smart? What more could you ask for? And I can read, okay? So people that can read are also welcome here.
So anyway, if you know someone in your family, maybe, or some friends, or, you know, you go out and you see somebody that looks like they're looking for work, say, hey, Elwin, give them a try. So thank you guys. Thanks for being with me thank today. Thank you, Grace. And Vanessa is going to let you guys all go. Oh, you guys are too. Thank you, Grace, for reading. That's that. okay. Thank you so much. They're not clapping only because they have lunch in their hands, okay? I'm okay. sure they wouldn't clap. But thank you, guys. I'm scooting away. Scoot, scoot. Oh, I like to do it a little. I like it. It's really cool. Really. It's a mouse with a box. Yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, so we'll pick tomorrow. Mm -hmm. See, they're going over. See, the colors are going to mix, I think.